hello students so in this video uh, we will be discussing about organic reaction mechanism so i hope this, uh, this is the last topic left out from organic chemistry so i think this will be the last video for the syllabus so let's begin with it okay so organic reaction mechanism it is uh, generally divided into four categories substitution reactions addition reactions elimination reactions and rearrangement reactions okay so substitution reactions and addition reactions are of three types nucleophilic substitution electrophilic substitution and free radical substitution okay elimination reaction is of two types alpha and beta elimination whereas beta elimination is further subdivided into e1 e2 and e1 cb elimination okay and rearrangement reactions can be of different types and you just see that this one is not included in your syllabus so we will not discuss this one but we will discuss the other three okay so first we will discuss substitution reactions so first uh, will be substitution reactions are of three types nucleophilic electrophilic and free radical okay so we will be discussing nucleophilic substitution reaction first so nucleophilic substitution reaction uh, first uh, it is of two types one is your SN1 reaction another one is your SN2 reaction okay so SN1 reaction means unimolecular nucleophilic substitution and SN2 means bimolecular nucleophilic substitution okay so one thing uh, you keep in mind if it is SN1 then the mechanism will be two-step mechanism okay for SN1 reactions you will get two-step mechanism and if it is SN2 then the mechanism will be a one-step mechanism okay so in this reaction what happens you see since it is a nucleophilic substitution reaction means a nucleophile will be substituting some other group in the reactant okay so say this is your reactant r bond l uh, and you have a nucleophile okay so what is happening you see in the product the l group is being uh, replaced by the nucleophile okay means the l group has been substituted by the nucleophile so this l group is nothing but your living group it is called your living group okay the l group is your living group means whichever group which goes out uh, of uh, this one the reactant is called your living group okay so first step uh, this mechanism of this reaction is divided into two steps step one and step two so in the first step what happens a formation of carbocation takes place okay formation of carbocation means what means that this living group l it will go out by itself okay it should go out by itself and you will get a uh, this one carbocation intermediate okay now if this group has to go out from itself then we uh, this group should be a good living group okay uh, see living groups are of two types one is which uh, one is means that type of living groups which are good living groups means which goes out by easily okay means by itself only it will go out okay and other type is that uh, it's called bad living groups means which does not go out by itself and you have to uh, use some external agents or you have to forcefully push that group out of the reactant okay so you just see say we have this uh, halogens fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine okay so this halogens you see uh, iodine is the best living group okay and fluorine is the worst living group why because fluorine you see it is a small size small sized it is electronegative but its size is smaller if size is smaller then the bond length between fluorine and the carbon will be small smaller okay and the shorter the bond length the stronger the bond is okay whereas iodine it's large in size so if iodine uh, you see uh, iodine is larger in size that means the distance between the two nuclei means carbon and iodine will be larger that means bond length is very high okay and if bond is longer that means the strength is weaker means uh, we know that bond length is inversely proportional to bond strength okay so you see uh, that's why we can see that as we go from fluorine to iodine as size increases the uh, this one living groups their ability increases okay so that's why iodine is a good living group and fluorine is a bad living group okay so uh, in this case what happens you see in the mechanism step one as the good living group should be a good, good living group okay so you just keep in mind if it is a SN1 reaction first step we get a carbocation intermediate 
okay so the living group should go out by itself no reagent is used so that's why this living group should be a very good living group then only assembly reaction will be possible okay and in the second step what happens the nucleophile will attack the carbocation and you will get your product okay so let us take this example uh, in this example we have uh, three degree l means uh, alkyl halide okay we have a three degree alkyl halide and chlorine is added means chlorine is the group that is present okay now chlorine is also considered to be a good living group okay so since chlorine is a good living group it will go out itself in the first step you just see chlorine is a good living group that's why it is going out by itself and we are getting a carbocation okay and three degree carbocations are very very stable we just studied in our GOC na stability of carbocations because CH3 groups are electron donating groups okay and electron donating groups stabilizes a carbocation intermediate okay so uh, as the chlorine group it is a good living group so it goes out by itself and we will get a carbocation intermediate okay so in the next step we have the nucleophile means OH minus so this nucleophile will simply add up in the uh, positively charged carbon and we will get this 3 degree alcohol okay now the first step is a slow step okay slow step means it is a rate determining step means the rate of the reaction will be determined by the slowest step and the second step is the fast step okay so uh, this one you see uh, it is uh, means written as retention and inversion both are possible means this OH group can attach in the same position just like the seal okay or it can attach from the opposite side okay means both retention and inversion of product is possible so this is your sn1 reaction always remember for sn1 reaction first thing your living group should be a good living group and second thing uh, is that the intermediate that is formed means this carbocation should be stable okay intermediate should be stable and the living group should be a good living group so if these two points are valid then only assembly reactions will be possible okay so you see this point is also important that ability of living group is directly inversely proportional to the basicity of the group okay now uh, one more thing is important uh, it is that in this reaction uh, this uh, first thing yeah 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 i told only okay living group is important if a living group is a good living group then only sn1 reaction will be possible and the intermediate should be stable okay so you keep in mind these two things while writing a mechanism for sn1 reactions okay so let us come to the second one yeah uh, one more uh, this thing this order of basicity is important you just memorize this one uh, this order of basicity is what it tells us that uh, which uh, nucleophile will be replacing or substituting which group okay means say just let us take this example say you have roh and you are using this nucleophile cl minus okay and in the other case you have rcl and you are using this nucleophile oh minus okay now see the first reaction it is not possible okay and the second reaction is possible why because of this order of basicity okay means uh, you see OH minus its basicity is higher than that of Cl minus okay that's why OH minus can replace Cl minus and Cl minus its basicity is less than OH minus so it cannot replace OH minus okay it means that uh, in substitution reaction a nucleophile is replacing the living group okay so incoming nucleophile means the nucleophile that is attacking on the reactant it should be more basic compared to the living group okay if the nucleophile is more basic compared to the living group then only it will replace the living group okay or else it cannot replace the living group that's why you see since OH minus is more basic compared to Cl minus that's why the second reaction is possible whereas Cl minus is less reactive than OH minus that's why the first reaction is not possible okay so this is a very very important point that you have to keep in mind okay so next let us uh, come to SN2 reactions means bimolecular nucleophilic re substitution reactions and uh, SN2 is one step okay just I told you now if it is SN1 then two step if it is SN2 then it is one step okay so SN2 reaction is very easy it's uh, very simple same thing you will have a nucleophile you will have a uh, reactant okay in this case the living group should be a bad living group okay 
means it will not go out by itself because if it goes out by itself we will get sn1 reaction okay two step mechanism but if since it does not go out by itself so what will happen the nucleophile it will attack from back side and from the front side the leaving group will leave means the leaving group is uh, forced to go out of the reactant okay so in this case also you have to keep in mind that the in nucleophile should be more basic then only it will replace the leaving group okay then only it will push the leaving group out of the reactant okay so a intermediate is formed this in this step is called your transition state okay ts transition state and it is represented by a double dagger symbol okay this state is nothing it is just uh, showing the uh, means one step is there now where the nucleophile and the living group are equidistant apart from the reactant okay means the living group is going out and the nucleophile is coming in and you will get your product okay but in this case what happens we'll get an inverted product because the nucleophile you just see this example the nucleophile is attacking from back side and this all these three hydrogens are flipped okay this previously it is like this the hydrogens and in the product you see the hydrogens became like this okay so we will get an inverted product only in case of sn2 reaction whereas in sn1 reaction we will get both inverted and retention of products okay so uh, this thing you just uh, assume this one as the umbrella you see umbrella is like this now it is like this so my drawing is very bad umbrella is like this okay now if uh, wind is means uh, say umbrella is like this and if you hold the umbrella in a uh, windy weather what will happen the umbrella simply goes upside down na? so this thing is happening here okay this thing is happening in this case the umbrella or you can say the hydrogens are just uh, their position is inverted okay so that's why it is called inversion of products okay next uh, this one say let us go to the next thing Achha, before this one let us just uh, do summarize this one say sn1 reaction first uh, key step is that the living group should be a good living group and second point is that the uh, intermediate should be stable okay whereas in sn2 reaction the living group uh, is a bad living group okay and this thing yeah nucleophile should be more basic compared to the living group okay one more point is there that you have to keep in mind you see this hydrogens now you have hydrogens that is connected to this c group okay hydrogens now see this height these are hydrogens means it is small small groups okay that's why nucleophile can easily attack the carbon from backside okay but if this would have been some other groups in place of hydrogen we are replacing it by ch3 okay say instead of hydrogen we have ch3 say we have ch3 we have ch3 and ch3 okay and this is your living group now you see this uh, this thing now it is a three degree group okay three degree carbon so this ch3 groups are very bulky groups okay since these groups are very bulky groups there will be no space for the nucleophile to reach the carbon from back side okay and front side to it cannot attack because this living group is also an electronegative group okay so this reaction means so that's why three degree uh, groups or three degree carbon atoms I have the least reactivity towards SN2 reaction okay towards SN2 reaction whereas for SN1 reaction 3 degree has the most reactivity why because 3 degree carbocations are more stable compared to 2 degree and 1 degree okay so this is a very very important step so this also you have to keep in mind okay so let us uh, go back to the next thing so next is your electrophilic substitution reaction okay so in electrophilic substitution reaction the electrophilic aromatic substitution is the most important reaction okay so electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions is very common for aromatic compounds okay in aromatic compounds you will find only this mechanism only electrophilic aromatic substitution okay this is very very important so uh, we'll just discuss the mechanism how it is uh, means uh, works how this electrophilic aromatic substitution works 
so first we will discuss halogenation okay so there are six different types of electrophilic aromatic substitutions so first we will discuss halogenation so all the reactions are same only okay mechanism is same for all these reactions so first step what is happening in halogenation we have a benzene ring we have cl2 in presence of fecl3 okay this fecl3 is your catalyst this fecl3 is a catalyst this is your reactant benzene and this is your uh, also a reactant cl2 okay so, uh, so cl2 is a reagent okay and uh, what happens in this reaction if we give this reagent in presence of this catalyst the cl group will be substituted in the benzene ring okay so how we will uh, proceed in this uh, reaction you see first step what happens first step is formation of electrophile okay this step is the key step only this step will be different in all the electrophilic substitution reactions remaining steps are same okay so formation of electrophile what happens this cl2 it reacts with this fecl3 okay and one of the cl it's connect uh, means it gets attached with this fecl3 and we'll get fecl4 minus and cl plus okay so this cl plus is your electrophile okay this cl plus is your electrophile okay now in the next step what happens this uh, pi bonds in benzene are uh, reactive because uh, electron rich okay and electrophile is electron deficient so it will simply attack the electrophile and we will get this intermediate okay where plus charge is present on benzene okay so in this process what happens benzene ring loses its aromaticity okay benzene ring loses its aromaticity and we know that aromatic compounds are very very stable okay and if benzene is losing its aromaticity that means uh, the, the compound or intermediate that is formed is unstable okay so in the next step what happens from the adjacent carbon a proton means a hydrogen will donate its electron to the benzene ring and it will go out as h plus ions okay so we'll get the aromatic benzene ring back okay means aromaticity is regained okay and in the last step what will happen that h plus will react with fecl4 minus to regenerate the catalyst and you'll get hcl okay so this is the overall uh, mechanism for this electrophilic aromatic substitution first step formation of electrophile second step attack of uh, this one between electrophile and the benzene ring third step is regeneration of aromaticity and fourth step is regeneration of the catalyst okay so all these th three steps I means say step two step three and step four are same only first step is very very important you have to memorize this step okay so this is for halogenation next is for nitration so in nitration we have nitric acid and sulfuric acid nitric acid is your reagent and sulfuric acid is your catalyst okay so this nitric acid and sulfuric acid will react and you will get no2 plus hso4 minus and one molecule of water okay so this no2 plus is our and this one uh, electrophile okay so in the next step electrophile will be attacked by the benzene ring again aromaticity will be lost then again one proton will donate its electrons and go out and in the last step will again the proton will again react with hso4 minus to give the catalyst back okay so this uh, all the steps are same only just a first step the formation of electrophile that step is different okay that will be different for all the reactions all the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions okay now see mechanism will not be asked in your exam okay they will not ask you to draw the mechanism okay because you will have mcq questions and you just have to take it okay but mechanism is very important for organic chemistry because without mechanism we will not know which is the product okay there will be many reactions which are not familiar to you but if you know the basics of organic chemistry say if you know goc and if you know how to write uh, reaction mechanism then you can find out the answer to any question okay so that's why mechanism is very very important so uh, let us go to the next next reaction so next uh, is your sulfonation okay in this one two moles of means excess of sulfuric acid is used so so3 h is your electrophile then same thing the steps are same the electrophile will be attacked by benzene ring then aromaticity will be regenerated by uh, this one loss of proton and again the proton will react with hs over minus to give your catalyst back okay means you see here uh, 
H2SO4 is acting as a catalyst also, H2SO4 is acting as a reagent also, okay, means two moles of H2SO4 are used, one is a catalyst, one is a reagent, okay. Then next uh, is your friedel craft alkylation, okay, so this reaction is very very important, so in this one uh, CH3 group is been substituted in the benzene ring, okay, so this is toluene. Okay, this is toluene. So what happens? This uh, in the first step, this CH three Cl it will react with AlCl three to give AlCl four minus and CH three plus. Okay, then this pi bond will attack this one CH three plus. Then in the next step, this hydrogen will donate electrons and we will get the aromatic compound back. This is our product. And then again, H plus will react with AlCl four minus to give HCl and the catalyst AlCl three. Okay. And the last type of this uh, friedel craft reaction is friedel craft acylation. Okay, this is same, the same reaction, just here acyl group is substituted CH3C double O. Okay, so same thing, uh, this will attack in the electron deficient carbon, means the electrophile, and this uh, proton will be going out and will get our product. Okay, then in the last step, the catalyst is again regenerated. So these are the uh, five different types of Friedel craft, uh, sorry, five different types of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Okay, so you just uh, try to solve this mechanism. This first step you have to memorize. Okay, this is very very important, and remaining steps you can write by yourself only. Okay, so next uh, let us go to free radical substitution reactions. Okay, this is the third type of substitution reaction. So if free radical reactions, what happens? Uh, just in GUC I have discussed now that free radical reactions uh, we use single headed arrow okay and for two electron movement we use double headed arrow okay so in free radical reaction we will discuss chlorination of methane first so this is uh, basically free radical mechanism uh, follows three steps okay first step you use your f f uh, initiation second step is your propagation and third step is termination okay so initiation what happens when you give sunlight this cl2 molecule na, both the chlorine has same electronegativity so they will take one one electron each and will get chlorine radical okay that chlorine radical with re will react with methane okay and will give you ch3 cl and hcl okay now this reaction will keep on going unless all the hydrogen atoms in methane are replaced by cl okay and in the last step the last hydrogen will be replaced by cl and we'll get ccl4 means carbon tetrachloride and this reaction will not step stop unless all the hydrogens are replaced why because this is a free radical reaction and it is done in presence of sunlight okay so uh, this reaction means see if you keep a beaker of methane and uh, cl2 gas and if you keep that in the sunlight then in the beaker you see there will be millions of methane molecules and millions of say Avogadro's number of methane molecules and Avogadro's number of Cl2 molecules okay and sunlight is falling and the reaction will carry on okay unless all the methane are uh, means all the hydrogens in methanes are replaced by Cl okay then only the reaction will stop so this is the basic mechanism for a free radical substitution reaction okay means here hydrogen is being substituted by Cl radicals then next uh, you have this one Oates reaction the famous Oates reaction is very very important this reaction is also called a step up reaction okay now see what are step up reactions step up reactions means which increases the number of carbons okay say if you have given a reactant uh, means say uh, you have to do a conversion okay organic conversion where on the left hand side you have a uh, three carbon molecule and on the uh, this one in the products you have a five carbon molecule okay means the number of carbons are increasing so that time you will use a step up reaction okay and if you want to decrease the number of carbons then time you will use a step down reaction okay so step up reactions are just like this one woods reaction fatigue reaction woods fatigue reaction these reactions are step up reactions okay whereas step down reactions are hoffman degradation and you will get yeah hoffman bromamide uh, reaction on all these things okay so these are step down reactions now see what happens in Oates reaction first step this uh, alkyl halide will undergo homolysis in presence of sodium metal and will get a ch3 radical okay 
now you see we have two alkyl halides means two moles of alkyl halides we are using okay so first step this will react and in the second step both the uh, alkyl means uh, this one ch3 radicals will react to give you the uh, say from it, it is methyl bromide so from methyl bromide you are getting ethane means number of carbon is increased okay so this is called a step up reaction the next uh, third one is your allylic bromination by nbs okay now see allyl group i told you allyl is this group where you have a sp2 hybridized carbon attached to a sp3 hybridized carbon then this group is called your allyl group okay now this sp3 hybridized carbon in this carbon bromine will be substituted okay so this is called your allylic bromination now this sp3 hybridized carbon in this one uh, this bromine will be substituted by using this reagent it's called nbs n bromo succinamide okay so if you use nbs in presence of ccl4 this will simply substitute this bromine in this allylic position means this one and we'll get a this one byproduct okay so this reaction is also important so mechanism for this reaction is not that important you just remember this reaction so if you give nbs nbs is a brominating agent so if you give nbs then bromine will be substituted in the all allylic position means the sp3 hybridized carbon not the sp2 hybridized carbon okay so next uh, yeah next is our addition reactions okay so uh, we just discussed substitution reactions so substitution reactions are of three types nucleophilic electrophilic and free radical okay so next uh, let us discuss uh, addition reactions so addition reactions means what you see uh, if you have carbon carbon double bonds okay say alkenes or alkynes say multiple bonds if you have okay then uh, in those two carbons we can add up uh, this one so some one electrophile and a nucleophile okay say let us take this example say for symmetrical alkenes let us take okay symmetrical means say you have a carbon carbon double bond and on both side you have same number of carbons okay say in this side also you have one c3 and the right hand side also you have one c3 okay so this type of alkenes are called symmetrical alkenes okay now in the symmetrical alkenes uh, we have to use such type of reagents say hcl hbr okay means which can dissociate to give you a electrophile and a nucleophile okay means from one reagent only you will get a electrophilic part and a nucleophilic part because you see hcl cl is more electronegative than hydrogen so it will take the electrons towards itself so it will have a cl minus and h plus okay so h plus will be acting as a electrophile and cl minus will be acting as a nucleophile so in the first step what happens the pi bond will just attack the hydrogen since it is a electrophile so it will take the hydrogen okay and will get a carbocation formed okay so in the next step what happens this chlorine will attack the carbocation and you will get a product okay now since it is a symmetrical alkene so it does not matter on which carbon the chlorine group adds and on which carbon the hydrogen adds because both are same if the chlorine adds in this uh, in this first carbon in this one say second carbon then also it will be same if chlorine adds on this one then also it will be same only okay just we will do the numbering from different sides okay say in this one the chlorine is added to this carbon or it is added to this carbon it is same only okay so for symmetrical alkenes there is no problem we can means uh, add chlorine on any carbon means on any sp2 hybridized carbon okay but uh, say in case of unsymmetrical alkenes now we have to follow two rules okay these rules are very important and you i think these are very famous rules you know only markovnikov's rule and anti markovnikov's rule okay so in markovnikov's rule what happens you see first thing if sp2 hybridized carbon is attached to a electron donating group okay in unsymmetrical alkenes means on both side you have unequal number of ACH3 groups means carbons okay so those type of alkenes are called your unsymmetrical alkenes so for unsymmetrical alkene first case is if the sp2 hybridized carbon is attached to a electron donating group okay now see these two are sp2 hybridized carbons okay and it is attached to a electron donating group ch3 means alkyl group methyl group is a electron donating group okay now if it is so you see the mechanism what will happen the pi electron same thing the pi electron will add attack the hydrogen and this bromine will go out okay so bromine will be your nucleophile 
and hydrogen will be acting as the electrophile okay now see this hydrogen it can attach on the terminal uh, this one carbon or it can attach on the middle carbon okay so if it if the hydrogen attaches on the terminal carbon we will get a two degree carbocation okay and if the hydrogen attaches on the middle carbon we will get a one degree carbocation okay and we know that carbocation stability two degree is more stable than one degree okay so this more stable carbocation will result in formation of the major product okay will result in formation of the major product so that's why this more substituted haloalkene is your major product in markovnikov's addition okay whereas let us discuss the next one say if sp2 hybridized carbon is attached to a electron withdrawing group okay so you have cho this is the electron withdrawing group attached to sp2 hybridized carbon okay so in this case what will happen same thing uh, this uh, and this will follow free radical mechanism okay plus one more thing is important that peroxide should be present okay if peroxide is present then it will be a anti markovnikov's rule so in the first step what will happen it is uh, it it will undergo free radical mechanism because you see this peroxide na it is like this means oxygen oxygen single bond is present then it is called a peroxide and peroxide you see both side you have same groups okay so it will undergo homolysis and both the oh groups will have one one electron so it will be oh free radical okay in the first step second step this oh free radical will be reacting with this hbr to give uh, water and br radical okay and this step na third step we just cut it because this is incorrect this step is not required okay you just don't try this step so what happens mm, this one so this br radical is generated in the first step okay next step what happens this br radical will attack in this pi bond means it will react with the pi bond and pi bond also undergo homolysis and we will get same thing we will get a 2 degree free radical or we can get a 1 degree free radical means if bromine attaches in the terminal carbon we will get a 2 degree free radical okay and if bromine attaches in the middle carbon we will get a 1 degree free radical this one okay now see one degree free radical is less stable compared to two degree free radicals okay we know that free radicals uh, stability is three degree then two degree then one degree okay so this more stable free radical means more stable intermediate will give you the major product now see that's why in anti marconics rule means if peroxide is present then the less substituted uh, haloalkene is your major product means terminal haloalkenes are major product for anti markovnikov's rule whereas for markovnikov's rule this central means if bromine or halogen is added in the central carbon then it is more stable okay so this markovnikov and anti markovnikov addition is very very important you just try to remember the mechanism for markovnikov it is simple uh, cation anion mechanism means hydrolysis for anti markovnikov it is free radical mechanism okay then uh, we have nucleophilic addition reactions okay so nucleophilic addition reactions means what you see say you have this one a uh, carbonyl compound say ketone okay so this oxygen is uh, electron rich and this carbon it is deficient of electrons okay delta minus so since this carbon is deficient of electrons so if you have a nucleophile it will obviously attack in this electron deficient center okay and if you have a electrophile that will attach in this oxygen so we will need same we will have some type of reagent say hcn which can dissociate to give you a electrophilic part and a nucleophilic part okay this one so the h plus will be attached in this oxygen and the cn minus will be attacking this electron deficient center so the mechanism it follows like this so you see the mechanism so in the first step what will happen in the first step this hcn no? it dissociates to give you h plus and cn minus okay in the second step this nucleophile cn minus will attack in the electron deficient center to give you a o minus radical okay no, sorry o minus ion so this o minus ion will then react with this h plus to give you a alcohol 
okay so this is the final product of this reaction now see this reactivity is higher for this compound than this and then this why because you see this group see if two ch3 groups are there it is bulky okay and if it is hydrogen only then it is less bulky that's why you can see now this uh, formal uh, this one yeah formaldehyde is more reactive than acetaldehyde and then acetone okay so this is because here it is uh, static hindrance is less so nucleophile can easily reach the electron deficient center okay so this is nucleophilic addition reactions then next is our elimination reactions okay so elimination reaction are of two types alpha and beta okay so alpha elimination is also called as one one elimination means from the same carbon two groups will be eliminated so you have chx3 from this one hx will be uh, eliminated to give you this carbene okay this is called your carbene okay whereas in beta elimination what happens from two adjacent carbons two groups will be eliminated okay to give you a alkene okay so this are the two different types of elimination one is one 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 is one two so beta elimination is of two types three types okay first one is e1 elimination e1 elimination same thing uh, since it is e1 so it will be two step okay so here you should have a good living group means the group that is attached to the carbon should, means living group that should be a good living group so since this living group is a good living group it will go out by itself okay and you will get a uh, carbocation intermediate okay now in the next step what will happen we will add the base the base what it will do it will take a hydrogen from the adjacent carbon means the beta carbon say the living group attached carbon is your alpha and the next carbon is your beta carbon so from beta carbon the base will take the hydrogen and the uh, the hydrogen will donate its electrons to the bond and we will get a alkene as the product okay so this is very very important e1 elimination is um, possible if the living group is a good living group plus the intermediate should be stable and then next we have e2 elimination okay e2 elimination is simple it is one step i told you in sn1 sn2 also sn1 is two step sn2 is one step okay similarly e1 is two step and e2 is one step so in this uh, e2 elimination what happens first we'll add the base the base will take a hydrogen it will give its electrons to this bond and it will push this group out of the uh, this one reactant okay so in this case the living group it is uh, it is a bad living group okay so that's why we will get a one step mechanism so this is the transition state or you can say intermediate so obviously the products will be same only for e1 and e2 you will get elimination product and will get uh, unsaturated compounds okay then the third type of elimination is your E1CB elimination, okay? E1CB elimination, it is nothing but uh, like E1 elimination only, but conjugate base is used, okay? So if you have this type of acids, acids, so it, if it gives H plus ion, we'll get a conjugate base. Means acid after donating H plus ion becomes a base, okay? Because that base can again take the H plus ion to get the give the acid back, okay? Now see, once the acid donates H plus ion, will get a conjugate base okay now this conjugate base what it will do it will push this fluorine group now this fluorine group that is attached to the beta position it will this minus charge will come inside and this fluorine group will be going outside okay so this fluorine is a very bad living group okay and we'll get a alkene so elimination reaction always remember if it is beta elimination the product will always be a alkene okay so these are the points that you have to keep in mind beta carbon should contain a minus i group means electron withdrawing group okay then living group should be a bad living group very bad living group and beta hydrogen should be highly acidic means the hydrogen that is going out should be highly acidic okay then only it is this reaction will be possible because if the hydrogen does not goes out the reaction cannot proceed further okay so these are the three different types of organic reaction mechanism that is possible so we have discussed substitution in substitution we had electrophilic aromatic substitution nucleophilic substitution and free radical substitution okay then we have discussed addition reactions in addition reactions we have discussed markovnikov and demarkovnikov's rule and nucleophilic addition reactions 
and third is your elimination reactions where you have discussed alpha and beta in beta we have discussed e1 e2 and e1 cb okay now one thing is important this orientation of beta elimination reactions okay so orientation of beta elimination reaction means what two rules are more that you have to follow one is cdf rule one is hoffman's rule okay so cdf rule always remember you will get central double bonds means the double bond will be formed in the middle of the compound okay and hoffman rule what will happen you will get a terminal double bond okay the criteria is very simple you see if you have a small base if you use a small base then it can take hydrogen from any position okay either it is a bulky position or a uh, means less bulky position it can take hydrogen from any position okay but if you use a large base say tertiary butyl hydroxide large base okay then you see this hydrogen this beta hydrogen with this compound is two beta hydrogen the central beta hydrogen it cannot be taken by this large base because since this base is large and you see these groups are bulky groups okay so this base cannot approach this hydrogen okay so it will take the other beta hydrogen means the terminal beta hydrogen will be abstracted and we will get a terminal double bond okay but if it is a small base it can take um, this beta hydrogen means the central beta hydrogen so we will get a central or more substituted double bond okay so one thing you remember uh, this is note is very very important e1 elimination obvious says the rule e2 elimination obvious hoffman rule e1 cb elimination both are possible both hoffman and cbs is possible okay so this is it organic reaction mechanism it is very uh, means uh, it's not that uh, this much only it has organic reaction mechanism but these are the basic things that you have to know okay so i just have uh just give it in a concise manner so that you don't get confused so just go step wise and know all this reaction mechanisms and then try to solve as many questions as you can because at the end of the day if you don't know how to solve questions you won't be able to do anything okay means you should know whatever you have studied now you should know how to apply those things so applications will be means uh, more effective only when you solve more questions okay so try to solve as many questions as you can because at the end of the day in the exams you have to solve questions only okay so if you don't have a practice of solving question you can never do good in your entrance exams okay so all the best guys for your exams and uh, i think with this the syllabus is over so you just uh, if you have any doubts you just contact me anytime okay so thank you